In every video that we've done, there's always a burp because we're a bunch of drunkards. Because <coughs> we said more than one show. Hello and welcome to Studio 48. This is Signal Path. This is where I get to talk about equipment, and hopefully, it's a piece of equipment that I have known for a long time, like the piece of gear we're talking about today. I'd like to talk about the Hardwire SC2 Valve Distortion Pedal. So the Hardwire SC2 Valve Distortion, which was made by actually Digitech. Digitech in the early 2000s was releasing affordable versions of what looked like and kind of reminded me of Boss pedals, but with more Americanized graphics and different things. They were considered cheaper entry-level pedals, you know, for beginners, but they uh, they still hold up if we uh, get our hands on a couple of those pedals. They still hold up today, at least, I, at least I think they do. The idea behind Hardwire was they were going to make boutique pedals that weren't going to cost the price of boutique, and they were going to sound very high quality. Uh, in the early 2000s, I owned almost every pedal they made. I, I was a really big fan. I really liked it. But uh, everyone was buying processors. Everyone was trying to just plug and play with just the amp. You know, the early 2000s was this immediate shift towards digital that we were all fighting with, but not really. Uh, pedals were almost on the way out. And now everyone loves them. Pedals are everywhere. I don't think that they quite caught on with people. I very rarely go to somebody's board and see, especially one of the overdrives or distortions that they made. They were often overlooked. A lot of music stores were like, well, I already have the Digitech pedals. Do I really need to carry the hardwire pedals? Well, this one, this is one I definitely think we should shed some more light on. I think it's a bit underrated. So when I uh, did some quick internet searching on the SC2 pedal, I didn't really find much. Uh, usually when you Google something, uh, I Google a guitar pedal, it's based on an amp or sounds like it's based on amp. That's what this sounds like to me. Usually you can find uh, some people debating on what that particular sound is, and then the manufacturer jumps in to say what they were thinking. I didn't see a lot of that with this one. I think it reminds me a lot of the early 90s uh, high gain guitar tones, like on the album Dirt by Allison Chains. It has kind of a Soldano, Bogner kind of vibe going on with it on the saturated side. So on the crunch side, it reminds me of more of an Ibanez Tube Screamer mixed with an amplifier. So it, it, it has a low gain and a high gain. They, they really stay very close. One thing I also liked was the volume didn't jump too much between them. Usually when you jump between settings like that, the volume changes quite a bit. I like the fact that these two modes are very usable, but to me, they're very different. I think you're gonna really gonna go from more of a classic rock sound to a 90s and to early 2000s type sound. Moving on to the controls, since I already did. First, we have the level. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. This is the, the volume on the pedal. It's a very mild level. It's it uh, You can kind of keep it halfway or less and get some good sound out of it. Some overdrives and distortions have very low volume. In fact, in the fuzz and distortion world, uh, that's one of the problems we have. This does not have that problem. This has plenty of volume on tap. The next is going to be the low circuit. The low circuit kind of reminds me of what you would hear on a metal zone type pedal. It increases the low end on everything. It's very, very obvious, but you can also dial it back and get more of a dry, crunchier sound out of it on both the saturated or crunch setting. The low is very interactive. Now, the high switch, anytime I look at a pedal and I see the word high, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not stoked. On this one, I would say that the high is definitely uh, less usable. If, as I increase it, I get some brittleness from it that I don't really like. As I decrease it, I get some darkness. But right about in the middle, just a little bit higher, I found a good sweet spot on it and I think it was very usable. And the gain is obviously very self-explanatory. The gain on this one, I typically on either setting, whether I'm using crunch or the saturated setting, I want the gain cranked up pretty high on this one. Okay, so I have the Hardwire SC2 currently running in the effects loop of my Ingle Invader 150. Uh, amplifiers have effects loops for a reason. Uh, you should always try a pedal out in the effects loop and see if you like it better versus the front of the amp. Anytime that I'm dealing with a pedal that is based or sounds like it's based on an amp, I'm going to run it in the effects loop. I just like that better. That way we can work the preamp of the amplifier with the pickups of the guitar and then work with the pedal sound. So here is my clean tone for today.
right, so here is my uh, high gain setting for the pedal. Uh, this is going to be uh, the knobs just a little bit past 12 o'clock with the gain at about maybe 2, almost 3 o'clock. And the volume down quite a bit. Like I said, this thing has a decent amount of volume on tap, especially through the effects loop. <laughs> I just find that any uh, medium gain tone, uh, that pedal seems to do a pretty good job of that. There's obviously more gain, so if I wanted to add more to make that a little bit gnarlier, I sure can. Uh, so there's a little toggle. We were just hearing the saturated side of the toggle. Now let's hear the crunch side. Now again, this is going to be lower gain, but still a decent amount of push. So the crunch side, very usable. You know, it, it does remind me of a low gain tube amp uh, pushed with a tube screamer or something in that family. But uh, I'm starting to feel more Vox vibes from it, maybe a little bit of the Hiawatt kind of tone when things are pushed. So I'm going to stay on the crunch side for now. We're going to dive into the settings just a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to add some more gain and play with it a little bit. it without and then I will click the uh, bonsai on as I'm playing so we can hear it kind of do its thing. Thanks for watching, I really feel like the Hardware SC2 is an underrated pedal and can be a great addition to anyone's collection. If you stay tuned, we have a speaker comparison to show you how I created the tone throughout the show. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, Instagram at Studio48KCK, and you can find my Instagram at Audio Brennan. Thank you.